Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear participants, we start in the name of Allah. On behalf of ISIP, International Students of Islamic Psychology, we are welcoming you here today for our first session with Dr. Abdullah Sabir, Introduction to Islamic Psychology. My name is Fatima Ahmed and I'm joining you. I'm actually in the United States, but I live in Canada. I'm just uh, here visiting with my, with my family. Uh, this is part of a five-part series. So today, every other Tuesday, um, um, we will be having our series with Dr. Abdullah Sabir. So thank you very much uh, to the large interest that has been shown um, to, to join us with, uh, with uh, Dr. Abdullah Sabir. So we start in the name of Allah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and we'll start with the Fatiha, and we ask Allah for beneficial knowledge, we ask for your forgiveness for any of our shortcomings. And we, we pray that inshallah that Allah puts tawfiq in our learning and making it our sincere in serving him and granting us knowledge and everything that will draw us closer towards him and towards uh, gaining his, uh, his ridha. So with that, inshallah, we ask uh, um, uh, for us all to make a fatiha. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Okay so before we get started, I wanted to just um, share with you all uh, some of ICIP's uh, our mission statement and some of the activities that ICIP is over it is um, is inviting uh, all of you to also be a part of this movement. So our mission statement to international students for Islamic psychology is that we are an inclusive space designed to connect people with diverse backgrounds interested in Islamic psychology. And when we say diverse backgrounds, just by the number of participants and the people here, you can see that uh, we mean diversity in terms of we're global. We have people all the way from Australia to, you know, to Canada. And, but we also mean diversity in our educational backgrounds. So a lot of people who are part of ISIP are uh, people who just have interest. We have people who are doing their bachelors or masters or PhDs. We have experienced clinicians. We have scholars as well. And in the sense of we're all students in that we're all uh, seeking to improve our knowledge. So when we say diversity, we mean in all types of ages, educational, and of course, ethnicity. So ISIP aims to disseminate knowledge and share resources and discuss best practices in a free and accessible manner. Uh, ISIP is a platform to enable further development of people's personal and professional interests, studies, and understanding of Islamic psychology within their communities or their country of origin. Some of our core values at ISIP is that um, what we try and embody both online and all of our interactions, we have a strategic team of about uh, 100 uh, members. Uh, and what we're, we're, we're impressing upon in all of what we are doing is we're trying to hold to our core values, which is God consciousness, truthfulness, sidq, uh, seeking of knowledge, talib al -in. Wafa, loyalty, integrity, istiqama, companionship, sohba, ihtiram, compassion, and service. So just so uh, we can all get started uh, today, some of the adab of the Zoom or the Zoom etiquettes that we'll be asking everyone to adhere to is to please keep yourselves on mute and um, to rename yourselves with the first name and the country so that uh, the moderators and the speakers know how to address you in case we need to address you. 
Um, so for example, you can put your name and your country. Uh, we do ask that there's no recording or screenshots. Um, and as we said, this, this meeting is being recorded, so it will be available uh, to people via our YouTube channel. And um, Brother Zubair or Sister Saima can put that link to our YouTube channel into the Zoom chat. Um, so just as a reminder, uh, we won't have any uh, racist or inflammatory derogatory comments. We pray that inshallah that uh, we're all holding to the values of ihtiram and interacting in a way that is safe and um, uh, adhering to our Islamic principles and ISIS core, core principles as well. Uh, we do, uh, if you have questions, you will, uh, you can ask them in the chat and you might want to just, you know, put questions so that when our moderators are looking for and compiling the questions, uh, we can collect them. And um, during Dr. Abdullah Sabi's uh, presentation, we won't have the questions, but we'll have an opportunity at the end. So we are very much invested in listening to your questions and having you uh, have a chance to ask them to Dr. Abdullah Sabi. Uh, just as a reminder, please don't make your personal recordings and please don't take uh, screenshots. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask, uh, so we have one uh, interactive part, uh, which I will ask you to participate in. So it'll just be a click. We have two polling questions where there's, uh, um, it's asking you where you're from. And I will start that and also uh, a little bit of background so that we at ISIP and uh, Dr. Abdullah Sabih uh, can, get a, can get a snapshot of um, who, the, uh, who is here today and who is joining us today. So I'm going to launch this poll and please feel free to um, answer. It would be wonderful if we can get everyone to answer. It's just a click. Okay, so there's, where are you joining us from today? And I am here today because I am and then you can fill in um, what applies to you. So I will launch that poll right now, inshallah. So go ahead and please answer. Uh, Dr. Zubair, is it up? Yes. Okay, wonderful. I see, okay, wonderful. I see, I see 12 people answering. 20. Oh, wonderful. This is exciting. Um, by the way, I don't see, uh, it's all anonymous. So when the results come, um, I'll share the results with everyone here, um, but it will be anonymous. So you won't see particular people's names. Mashallah, we have most of our participants joining from Africa so far. That is amazing. Mashallah, we have a hundred people who've answered this poll. That's amazing. Okay, I'll leave it up for about um, another 30 seconds. So if you haven't had a chance to vote um, and to share your result, where, yeah, we have almost 90% of people who have, so that's great. So maybe once we get to 90%, I'll close the polling and we can share the results. Maybe one more person and then we get to 90%. All right, we hit 90%, that is amazing. Okay, so we had 123 people answering and here is our results. Wow, okay, we have 50%. Oh, let me share it. Um, Brother Zubair, if you're able to, 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 to capture this, that would be great. Um, I'm going to just share the results right now.
Brother Zubair, are you able to see the results? Yes. Okay, Sister Saima, can you see the results? Okay, so we can see from North America, we have 10%. From South America, we have 2%. From Europe, we have 7%. From Africa, mashallah, we have 50% of um, our, our participants today are coming from um, Africa. From Asia, we have 28%. From the Middle East, we have 4%. And from Australia, it's not the right time zone, so I'm not surprised it's zero. I am here today because, so 85% of our participants here, so that's all you, um, are interested in Islamic psychology. That is wonderful. Uh, we have 25% who enrolled in graduate uh, uh, studies in psychology. We have 6% enrolled or graduated from Islamic studies and working in the field of uh, mental health as a professional, we have 31%. So it kind of gives you um, a snapshot of who um, is here and the type of uh, audience that ISIP is, um, is involved with. So we really thank you. Um, at this time, I'm going to stop sharing these results. I'll actually just download it as well. Okay. Okay. Um, Dr. Zubair, do you, would you like to share um, in the Zoom chat? So just before we get started, um, ISIP has, uh, we have a lot of, um, we have a lot of initiatives that we're involved in. We have uh, book clubs, we have support groups and we have our resource sharing. And all of this has been kind of brought together through our WhatsApp groups. So Dr. Zubair will be sharing uh, with you all, if you're not part of the Islamic psychology uh, WhatsApp groups and you would like to become a, uh, you would like to join that, then uh, please feel free to go ahead and do that. I believe most of you are probably already um, part of the Islamic psychology groups, but if you're not, then Dr. Zabir will be uh, sharing that in the chat. And if you would like to join, uh, we have uh, group 10, I believe. And if that gets filled, we, we, we're starting a group 11. In, in these groups, we have resource sharing. So this is where we're uh, sharing our resources and um, it's for people all over the world um, who have this interest uh, as you do in Islamic psychology. Um, we also have a website that is under construction and inshallah, we will continue to be connected uh, through, further, um, through further lectures and seminars and, and initiatives that ISIP is doing. Um, and through our newsletter, if you become a member, inshallah, when we have our, guide, our website up and you can become a member, um, we'll have a, a newsletter where ISIP members will know about this uh, type of course and these types of gatherings that we're having. Uh, as mentioned, we already all, already have some ongoing initiatives that we've started since January, such as book clubs, such as support groups, and such as um, uh, networking between people who have this interest in Islamic psychology. Okay. So at this time, I would like to, um, it's my honor to uh, introduce uh, you all to Dr. Abdullah Sabih. So Dr. Abdullah Sabih is the former associate professor of psychology at the University of Imam Muhammad Ibn Saud Riyadh in Riyadh, uh, Saudi Arabia. He is one of the renowned scholars in Islamic psychology in the Arabic world. Um, he actually is giving this course in Arabic as well. So he's doing it for us in two languages, alhamdulillah. So we're very grateful and very honored, uh, Dr. Abdullah, that, that you're giving up so much time uh, to help spread this knowledge that uh, many people are interested in. Dr. Abdullah is the author of papers and a book. Um, uh, the book is in Arabic 
تمهيد في التأصيل رؤية في التأصيل الإسلامي للعلم النفس. So um, in Arabic, in English, that would be an introduction to Islamic psychology, a perspective on Islamic rooting or Islamic um, uh, Islamic rooting of Islamic psychology. And that was a book that was first uh, published in 1999. And the foreword is by um, Dr. Pro uh, Professor Malik Badri, who is, uh, again, the pioneer in the modern day um, Islamic psychology, who re who's really made a revival. Rahim Allah, may Allah bless him and may Allah uh, increase him. And all of this may be, may it be Sadaq Qajariya, inshallah, for him. So, we're very honored, uh, Dr. Abdullah, that you're joining us here today. And uh, without further delay, I would like to um, switch to your slides so that you can start, inshallah. You want me to start now? Yes, inshallah. I'm just going to share your screen. I'm sorry, I'm going to share my screen with your. Um... Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslim kathira. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this great opportunity to speak to those who are interest, interesting in Islamic psychology or psychology or Islamization of psychology. And it is an honor for me to be in this position and talk about this subject. Uh, I want to thank ISP, international students, uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I never imagine that I'll speak to the whole world through internet about the subject. And my imagination is to speak to just a few people in one room about as I did, uh, as I do uh, usually in my uh, teaching time, but to speak to the whole world uh, and to this uh, number is something uh, a grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to give me shukr to this nama. Uh, first, I have to uh, remember those people who taught me Islamization of psychology, and I have to uh, mention them uh, and make dua for them. Islam taught us to respect our teachers, to pray for them, to remember them, and to be humble when we teach what we learn from them. Now it is time to pay their merit. And it is inappropriate for me to talk about Islamization of science or psychology and not mention, and not to mention whom I learned from, nor to pray for them. Uh, this will, this will uh, etiquette requires me to convince their effects and to pay for and to pray for them. I learn Islamization from many, but the most are four pro, uh, prominent scholars who had major effects on me, and these are Muhammad Khair Al Arqasusi from Syria. Uh, he taught he taught us in, uh, in the undergraduate at Imam University. And he was one of uh, BIJ students. And he was the first one to, to speak to us about Islamization and, and, to, and, to, talk, and, to, talk, uh, and to talk to us about uh, Islamic psychology. And I remember one, one day, and that is long time ago, before uh, uh, Alpha Bamia, no, 140, 140, 
و when uh, 1980, before 1980, uh, he said, probably you are the, uh, you are among few people or the only people who, who speak and who talk and who hear uh, something about Islam and psychology. Uh, the second one is Malik Badri. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him mercy. Uh, and he also taught me uh, uh, Islamic psychology in undergraduate level uh, at Imam University. And Malik Badri uh, did something great for me. He introduced, he introduced, introduced uh, to us uh, Islamic psychology, and he also introduced me to the world of Islamic psychology uh, through writing uh, a muqaddima or uh, 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 in my book, Tamheed uh, al And the third one is, is Ja'far Sheikh Idris, and he is a well-known distinguished scholar in the Muslim world. And uh, uh, probably um, I haven't met anyone in his uh, level uh, expert in Islamization. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give him health and uh, uh, rise him in, in his uh, agenda. The fourth one is Muhammad Qutb. Muhammad Qutb, I did not uh, meet him. Uh, as a student, but I learned from his book, uh, from his books, uh, and Muhammad Qutb is a leading figure in Islamic psychology. But uh, probably he is uh, he is the first one uh, called Muslim scholars to get out from Western paradigm and to establish Islamic theory and psychology, and that was in 1952, uh, and that book was Insan Bain al Madiyah al Islam. Now, <clears throat> I want to start with a point. Why is there a need for Islamization of psychology? Uh, this point was discussed, it seems to me discussed a lot. And those people who joined this lecture uh, may not uh, have problem with this uh, question. Uh, and, I, and I am assuming uh, those people pass this stage and have grown convinced of the necessity of rooting or Islamization. But I want to mention uh, three things uh, briefly and quickly. First one about the need uh, to Islamization is the Muslim scholars need for independent a framework of knowledge and in a Muslim scholars need for an independent framework of knowledge and the inability of Western paradigm to meet the need of researchers. Uh, second thing, a criticism of psychology. Many people, many writers, many scholars uh, criticize psychology and this is something uh, normal. To criticize any theory, to criticize psychology is something uh, normal. It is uh, not unusual. Uh, unfortunately, in, in our in the Arabic world, it is uh, unusual to criticize uh, any theory or in psychology or uh, or sociology or. Uh, uh, but it is a need to criticize any theory, and it is a need to teach our students uh, uh, the criticism uh, or the critique of, uh, uh, of psychology. Uh, we want them to grow uh, in big mind, to look in a wide uh, spectrum, uh, to think uh, in a head, and, and they cannot get into this uh, stage uh, without uh, preparing for them uh, to critique or 
to criticize uh, the psychology uh, or the social sciences. <laughs> the third one, science advance, science advances with the criticism. Uh, science, any science, uh, does not evolve and develop uh, without uh, uh, criticism, without uh, criticizing the theory, without uh, trying to uh, test the theories, to test the, the concepts. Without, without doing this such, uh, uh, our science, our psychology will not, uh, uh, will not grow up, will not develop. Uh, what about <clears throat> now? I, I talk about the preliminaries paving the way for Islamization of psychology. Uh, psychology was uh, presented uh, to the Arab world 70 years ago, or more than 70 years ago. Uh, and Muhammad Qutb seems to me is the first one to talk about this. And his book was published in 1952, as I said. But at that time, the school did not, uh, did not get, uh, did not get a good response. And uh, it, uh, the call, the Muhammad Qutb call, Muhammad Qutb calls uh, went just in the air and nobody, it seems to me, uh, hear it. Just a few people. Why? Because of the time. Uh, one researcher tried to uh, wrote a, a paper about uh, a, a bibliography paper about uh, uh, the, mate the, uh, the materials and uh, uh, addresses about uh, about Islamization in social sciences in psychology, uh, education, sociology, uh, politics. And, uh, and this was published uh, before uh, 1980. And all he could find is uh, around 500 or uh, ar uh, less than 600 uh, titles. Later, another writer get uh, uh, another list of titles of uh, bibliography uh, within just five or uh, uh, or ten years from uh, 1980 to uh, I believe 1910 uh, or uh, or, or nine, uh, 1987 or uh, 1990 uh, and he got more than 300 titles. Uh, so uh, time. Uh, affects uh, any, uh, any ideology uh, or any idea to be accepted or not to be accepted. Any idea does not evolve without support from the environment. And the best support manifests itself in the social acceptance of the idea. Being right does not guarantee idea success if its time has not come yet. This explains why some wrong ideas spread out in the society, why some other correct ideas fail. One can say the current time is supporting a specific idea if the, dom if the dominating idea is failing or stumbling and the new idea is meeting some of people's needs. The biggest marketer of an idea when its time comes and the greater and the greatest obstacle facing any idea and hindering it is that when its time has not come, has not come yet. Now, what are the variables and events work as preliminaries for Islamization and psychology and pave the road for it? First one, many contemporary theories fail or suffer of shortage. Many contemporary psychological theories fail or suffer of shortage, so researchers are forced to search for alternative theories or scenarios. Second, the position rejecting religion and psychology has receded 
For example, the American Psychological Association issued in 1996 a special book on the use of, of religions and psychological counseling and located in its annual meet conference, a training workshop, a training workshop on this subject. In addition, the psychological encyclopedia issued by the American Psychological Association, APA, in, in 2000, made a place for, psych, for psychology and Islam. So they took the role of Islam and psychology in a positive way. Third, the emergence of a humanistic approach and positive psychology, which directs psychology to focus on normal behavior instead of abnormal, and then religion and religious, uh, religiosity. F uh, fourth, al-fitrah. Al-fitrah is an Islamic concept, and it is built in each one of the human being, whether he's a Muslim or non-Muslim. Uh, the fitrah, the innate fitrah, uh, motivate us to find the, uh, to find the good and to find the right, and to find the appropriate for us, and to deviate from the wrong, uh, and from the ugliness or bad things. Some court, fifth, some court is, wit is witnessing a nature awareness, a mature awareness. Some court is, wit is witnessing a mature awareness, a return to religion, and a pride and a pride in the Islamic identity. The Islamic court is witnessing a mature awareness, a return to religion and a pride, and they are bride to be uh, Muslims and the bride for their identity. <laughs> Western civilization, the sixth one, Western civilization is witnessing setbacks and, and its principles and failure to fulfill its promises. These are challenges facing values of justice, of freedom, quality, and human dignity. For example, the rise of racism in Europe through right-wing parties, the collapse of the family, the domination of individualism of our society, and the crushing of values of mercy. All these are refractions and defeats of Western values that preached by the philosophers of Western secularism. <laughs> All these, these, um, uh, these some factors pave the way for Islamization and make people uh, in the social science to look for alternative, to look for uh, uh, Islamic concept, to look for uh, their, their own sources, uh, the Islamic sources, to find out uh, an Islamic theory. <laughs> now let us move to the definition of Islamization of psychology. In the literature of Islamization of psychology movement, there are two known prominent terms. The first one is Islamization of psychology, or Ta'seel al-Islami al-Ilm al-Nafs, and also the Islamic guidance uh, of psychology. They are both has the same meaning. And the second uh, term is Islamic psychology. And I'm going to speak about these two things, about Islamic psychology and Islamic psychology. I'm going to explain these two terms, I under, I, as I understood them, uh, many people think that uh, these two terms has the same meaning. And I, I was among these people, uh, and I said this in my book, Tamir with I said all the terms has the same meaning. But after teaching, uh, some psychology and uh, Islamization and being in the field for more than uh, uh, for almost 30 years or so, uh, it seems to me each uh, term 
has its own meaning. Let us start with the first one, Islamization of psychology or Islam guidance. It is the entrance to Islam psychology, which provides the researchers or the students of Islam psychology with the Islamic background he needs in his, in his specialization. And it is a grave mistake for some researchers to uh, deal into Islamic psychology without completing its Islamic foundation. That is why you find some of them do more harm than, do, than they do good and corrupt more than they can reconcile and commit a great crime against Islam and Islamic Sharia ah by attributing to it what is not from it. Islamization of psychology in its relation to Islamic psychology is similar to the science of jurisprudence or soul fiqh to jurisprudence al fiqh. The jurist does not dispense with the principles as they are, as they the principles, uh, the ones that control the curriculum and define its concept, as well as the Islamization of psychology that controls the student of Islamic psychology and his legal foundation, foundations and in his understanding of the Quran and Sunnah and employing that in psychology. Psychology is a positive and not normative science. But Islamization of psychology is a normative science. Like research methods, they are normative sciences, and psychology is not a science of it, of it violates research methods. And Islamic psychology is not a science if it violates Islamization of psychology and is not controlled by it. Islamization of psychology is the foundation stage for Islamic, for Islamic psychology. And we call it in Arabic at Tasis, Marhalat at Tasis. Among the issues that should be studied in the Islamization of psychology are establishing the Islamic paradigm for science. Without an Islamic paradigm, we cannot do anything either in Islamizing psychology or Islamizing sociology or, 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 or education. Or, we need an Islamic paradigm. We need to have our own paradigm. We need to have an independent paradigm instead of following the uh, dominating paradigm in the Western psychology or Western uh, social sciences. Um, employing the Islam methodology in, in studying the relationship between Islam and psychology and identifying areas of encounter and areas of conflict. Also identifying legal evidence, adilla sahiha, and deploying them in extracting psychological theories and concepts from legitimate assets or resources. The researcher needs to know the sources of legalization and the significance of the legal evidence and its validity from Quran and Sunnah. And it is sources and the fundamental legal rules govern Islamic Sharia, such as the principle in actions that are permissible, al asl fi al afal al ibaha, and principle in actions are permissible, and uh, the principle in the matter that is obligatory and hardship brings facilitation. Uh, and Allah does not burden a soul beyond its capacity. And the purpose of the great Sharia. These <coughs> concepts must be known uh, by students of Islamic psychology and the students of uh, Islamization of uh, psychology. If the students or the writer or the researcher does not know these things, 
how come he can uh, surmise something uh, uh, without knowing the Islam itself? What is meant by rooting is the relationship between the text of the Quran and Sunnah and theory in psychology. If, uh, a researcher needs to connect or needs to study the relationship between uh, Quran and Sunnah from one side and the theories on psychology from one side. And it is very wrong to connect ayah and hadith with Western theory. Because ayah, ayah and hadith uh, are ha fact. And the theories, uh, something, uh, it is uh, uh, not fact, it is uh, uh, a theory, it is, uh, uh, or something hypothesized, or, or something, uh, uh, which at another uh, uh, perspective. Uh, it, is, uh, it, is, it is very wrong to, to make connection between ayah, which is haq and uh, thabit, with something uh, changing. Uh, we uh, embroil it today, but after a while, we leave it to another thing. Uh, in my book, I have identified, uh, I have identified uh, uh, four components of the, uh, of the Islamic epistemology, which are knowledge, man, society, and existence. And inshallah, I'll talk about this uh, later, inshallah, in the coming uh, lecture. Because of, the, because of the breach of authenticity, because of the breach uh, of the authenticity, uh, breaking the, the authenticity, we saw some writers and researchers argue with weak or fabricated hadith that have no basis and link them to psychological theories. They, they are neither the they neither corrected psychology nor protected the Sharia from the misguidance of psychological theories. Now I move to the, to the second term, Islamic uh, psychology. This branch, Islamic psychology of knowledge, uh, studies the soul or studies, studies the behavior. Uh, Islamization does not study the behavior. Islamization of psychology does not study the behavior. It lay the, lay the basis or lay the cornerstone for the researcher to build the theory or to build the Islamic psychology. The main goal of Islamic psychology is to find an Islamic psychological theory. And it can be defined as, the Islamic psychology can be defined as building psychology according to the Islamic paradigm or the Islamic cognitive framework. The Islamic paradigm is the epistemological foundations or Islamic foundations that are established by Islamization of psychology. Islamic psychology is a constructive process or stage where we build Islamic theories while Islamization of psychology is a foundation state where we lay down an Islamic paradigm or cornerstones for Islamic psychology. Now I move to the misconception in, Islamic, in Islamization and Islamic psychology. These misconceptions, uh, we can find it in many writers who wrote about is, uh, Islamization or Islamic, or Islamic uh, psychology. I uh, counted six uh, misconceptions uh, and I uh, present them one by one. First, presenting Western psychology in an Islamic image by researching the Islamic con connotations of what, of, of what support Western concepts or presenting Western concepts in Islamic form so that individuals who are alienated from what is Western accepted. Uh, we found some people, some um, uh, professors, some scholars, unfortunately, who present uh, a theory 
or, or Freud or Maslow or uh, anyone, and presented with some ayah or some hadith, and said this hadith is so supporting what it, what Freud said or what Watson said or what Watson said. Or, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is misleading uh, the students, misleading people, and corrupting uh, Sharia or Islam and corrupting uh, psychology. <coughs> this behavior is wrong for two things. The first, the disagreement between those concerned with the Islamic psychology and Western psychology is not in terms, but rather in the connotations of meaning. And if these connotations were true, the researchers wouldn't care about the term. The content is wrong. If the content is wrong, uh, the term or uh, the word will not help us. Will be still war wrong. Second, the disagreement is not in the particular, in the particulars, just but rather in the fundamentals, kulliyat. And correcting the terms by borrowing Islamic terms does not make them sound because the foundation upon which they are based is wrong. In addition to the fabrication in this approach, it does not establish an Islamic psychology. And its goal is to preserve what exists without presenting Islamic and Islamic alternatives. <coughs> Second misconception, Islamic psychology is a heritage view. Some researchers, some researchers think that the same psychology is to present the heritage of Muslim scholars and prove their precedence to some uh, psychological theories and concepts. Some people may talk about Al Ghazali, and some people may talk about Ibn Taymiyyah, or Ibn Qayyim, or Ibn Sina, or Al Farabi, or Al Mawardi, or Harid al Muhasibi, and say, here's the scholars of. Uh, psychology in Islam. That's correct. But you are talking about heritage, about Islamic heritage. You are not about talking about uh, Islamic theory, uh, about Islamic psychology. You are, you are just talking about, uh, you need to tell, talk about this. You need to present their works. But uh, if you stop, uh, at their works, and you do not add to it, you are not presenting Islamic psychology. In fact, uh, heritage is one of the tribu uh, tributaries of the Islamic psychology. It provides us with some concept and perceptions, but it is not the ultimate goal of Islamic psychology. Rather, in the writing of, of some scholars of Muslim heritage, some psychological concept that Islam dis, 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 like the assumption of some philosophers about psychological perfection, how these, how are these perception and Islamic rooting of psychology. Uh, Al-Farabi in, in al Madina Al-Fadila spoke about uh, the concept of God uh, and about uh, the mind or aql and make connection between them, uh, something uh, not Islamic against Islamic, and some people may bring these things as or uh, present these things as uh, an Islamic uh, psychology. This is wrong. Uh, this is this is a wrong perception. Because psychology is like any science in which. There is a some psychology is not is to read uh, the third the third uh, the third misconception. A some psychology is to reject psychology entirely and to find an Islamic alternative. This is a wrong perception. Psychology is like any science in which there is right and wrong, and which should be re and which should be rejected is is only wrong. In addition, psychology during its nearly 150 years history has a rich heritage of experiment, practices, 
and scientific laboratory research and has achieved multiple success in correcting some of the mistakes of, the, of its pioneers, as well as other success in modifying, interpreting, and predicting behavior. Whoever calls for rejecting psychology in its entirety on the pretext that is Western or that there are errors in it, he is mistaken. Nevertheless, if he intends to be independent in the customary perception and the foundation in which we build uh, psychology and build Islamic theories based on the Islamic cognitive perception or paradigm, then this is correct. Fourth uh, misconception, Islamic psychology is a study of some verses and hadith related to the soul or related to behavior or psychology. And they explain the meaning of ayah and explain the meaning of hadith and think that they are presenting Islamic psychology. And this is wrong. This is a lesson in hadith or sunnah and tafsir or explaining the Quran, but not building a theory. We need to build a theory to build a science called Islamic psychology. Some researchers imagine that Islamic psychology is the presentation and explaining an explanation of some Quranic verses and some hadith related to the, uh, to the behavior or to the soul. In fact, this is not only good, but it is a must because it helps us in Islamization. But it is not building a theory, nor psychology, rather from the science of interpretation, hadith, or Islamic culture. Fifth, Islamic psychology is a preaching of rightness in the religion of Allah, performing acts of worship, repentance, and seeking forgiveness. And this is good, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order us to preach Mu'idha Hasana in da'wah. He said, invite the way, invite the way of your Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them in a way that is best. Indeed, your Lord is most known of who has strayed from this, from his way. And he is most known of who is rightly guided. In, in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the Quran as a sermon or bawila, saying, this is a statement of, for the people, a guidance and uh, and a munition for the righteous. Uh, Therefore, preaching is encouraged by Islam and it is a method of teaching. Indeed, a psychologist inevitably benefits from preaching and he can promote values among the, uh, bene uh, among the beneficiaries through preaching. But Breaching does not create psychological theories, which can explain, control, and break behavior. Six, Islamic psychology is to take what agrees with our religion from psychological theories and leave what contradicts it. Uh, choosing some Western psychological theories is not the establishment of an Islamic psychological theory. <coughs> a speaker or a teacher come to a theory like, for example, Freud, and uh, take one part and say, this is okay, and remove one part about uh, sex or about uh, uh, childhood, or, and say, this is wrong, and we, we will delete it. But a theory is just like an engine. If you take parts of the engine, it will not work. And if you, if you take parts of the theory, it will not work, and you are damaging the theory, and you are not presenting uh, right psychology. So leave the, the Western theory as it is, and start on your on your own theory, and start on your on your own theory, uh, an Islamic independent theory.
as well as uh, choosing some Western psychological theories is not the establishment of an Islamic psychological theory as well as any psychological theory. We can choose, we can choose, we remain linked to its philosophical origins and its perception of man and knowledge, which are perceptions that do not agree with our Islamic perception. Uh, some people will say, what about if I take the, or neglect the wrong part of a theory and add to it some of my concepts? This is okay. Now you are establishing a new theory. Uh, whether it has some part of, of other theory, there is no problem. But uh, to damage the theory and take part and leave it uh, without uh, adding which let the theory run or work uh, in predicting and uh, in explaining and in modifying uh, behavior, uh, this will not work uh, probably. Uh, I'm not, uh, this is the long speech I gave in English. I hope, inshallah, in the future I'll be much better. جزاك الله خير وشكرا لاستماعكم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. بارك الله فيكم دكتور عبد الله شرفنا يعني الحمد لله الله يعطيكم عافيه الحمد لله وشكر الله ثانك يو سو ماتش فور شيرينج يور نولج اند يور ويزدوم ذاتس 30 ييرز اند اي ريلي ابريشيتد وين يو سيد ذات ات ذا بيجينينغ اوف يور جيرني you know, 30 years ago, the, the differences between Islamization and Islamic psychology uh, were unclear. And I can say for myself, you know, being at the beginning of my own journey, that I really appreciated hearing that. And that as we continue in our journeys to, um, to gain ilm in this field, we start to see where, um, where these definitions may be important to know and where in our journeys, like I'm, I'm a master's student, uh, but one of the reasons that uh, ISIP was founded. One of the reasons that we wanted to get involved in, and spread this knowledge is because I'm also in the education field. I'm a teacher by profession. And I noticed after, you know, 20 years, almost 20 years of being in the teaching profession, that we're just replicating certain paradigms. And without even knowing it, we're, we're, we're replicating paradigms that may even go against uh, some of our Islamic principles. And I definitely didn't want to do that. So speaking from my own journey, I really appreciated you know, how you were trying to outline the differences. And um, when you said that, you know, that all students and researchers should know the maqasa the sharia, that really, really resonated with me. Um, and, and I feel that uh, the maqasa the sharia, when we know the overall aims of our religion and of the sharia, if we don't know that, then there can be lots of opportunities for mistakes that we'll be making in this field. Um, I also appreciated uh, when you said that relating hadith is not um, is not building a theory, and I think that's really important because we have a lot of people who are uh, religiously they have a lot of great Islamic sciences, very solid in their Islamic science, but um, just simply relating a hadith doesn't create a theory that will be usable, basically. In, in, in this field. So I really appreciated that. Those were some of my um, takeaway points as well. So Alhamdulillah, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Abdullah. Um, at this time, I will invite uh, our moderators, uh, uh, Dr. Zubair uh, in Algeria, Sister Saima in India. If you're able to share with us, um, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen actually, um, so that I can take a look as well. And if we have some questions, this would be a wonderful time uh, for our participants to engage with Dr. Abdullah Asabih in some of the material that has been presented uh, regarding definitions, regarding misconceptions of what Islamic psychology is. Okay, so there's a question here, um, Dr. Zub uh, and I'll, okay, so I can read the question from uh, Brother Ahmed Mayet. So Dr. Abdullah, um, this question is from Brother Ahmed. 
It says, are we saying that Islamic psychology cannot only be studied by looking at the study of previous scholars, such as Imam al-Ghazali and his books like Ihya ulum al din and rather we need to constantly adapt Islamic psychology for the modern era to understand modern humans. Okay, <clears throat> Brother Ahmed, uh, if you study Ghazali, it's, go it's going to help you. And you need to study Ghazali to understand some concept and, uh, and to understand and to be familiar with uh, some Islamic uh, concept. Uh, to be familiar with some ayah, some hadith. But if you stop at this stage, you are not performing uh, an Islamic psychology. Uh, the Islamic psychology of al Ghazali uh, is okay, but you need to work on your own time, your own problem, your own society, you are your own self and establish as an Islamic theory. And Islamic theory is not something uh, uh, untouched and some, something ma'asum uh, uh, or something muqaddas. It is, it is uh, a nazar, a point of view, something you can add, something you can devise, something you can uh, develop, something you can also reject. It is an uh, ijtihad in Islam. <laughs> yes. Uh, Brother Ahmed, uh, would you like uh, any clarification on what uh, Dr. Abdullah has provided or is that, does that help answer your question? Feel free to um, uh, continue in the chat or with a follow-up. Oh, okay. So it's, Jazakallah khairan for the answer. It's perfectly clear. So thank you, Dr. Abdullah. Um, Brother Ahmed has responded. Um, there's a question. Uh, there's some feedback from Sister Sumaya in South Africa. She said, as a practicing psychologist, I appreciate the distinction and emphasis on the distinction as it is crucial going forward in creating a theory in Islamic psychology. So thank you very much. Jazakallah khairan, Sister Sumaya. Um, at this time, if there are other participants who would like to um, please add their questions. Uh, Zarina Mohammed. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. The points presented by Dr. Abdullah actually enlightened my longtime contemplation. I'm sorry, just lost, lost that whereby I was a little confused with my readings about the effort to Islamicize the field of Islamic psychology. So a little bit of feedback from um, Sister Zarina. Thank you very much. Uh, Hannah from India uh, shares with us, the session was insightful, Jazakallah khairan. I'm a student of advanced Islamic science. I could relate to a lot of things that in the speaker has said in correlation to Sharia and fiqh. Yes, and I really appreciated that as well, you know, that. Uh, having usul al-fiqh and fiqh as kind of how we can look at Islamization and, um, and the approaches so that we need to know the principles. You know, the faqih can't really make uh, their rulings unless they know usul al-fiqh. And so I really appreciated that as well. So thank you, Sister um, Hannah in India. Uh, there's a question that uh, Sister Hannah uh, asks. How can students of knowledge learn more in depth in Islamic psychology? What could be the starting point? And how can one learn in a structured method? Dr. Abdullah? Well, uh, this is, uh, uh, no, the, the answer is, uh, is very long. And uh, you have to start from the beginning. You have, you have to learn Islam. You have to uh, study, you have to be familiar with the sources, the Islamic sources, the Quran and Sunnah, uh, the meaning of ayah. Uh, you have to know uh, the Arabic meaning of, uh, of uh, word in Quran and Sunnah, to be familiar with Hadith, to be familiar, familiar with the Quran. And you have to study Usul uh, Faqh. Uh, 
at least uh, some part of it. You have to study al qawaid al faqiya You need to study. You need to study also uh, uh, the aqidah. The علم العقيدة, because uh, you are dealing with some philosophical uh, concepts, and uh, you may get astray uh, without knowing uh, you are astray. Uh, you have you have to work. Uh, if uh, if anybody asks you, I want to be uh, expert in social psychology. Uh, what should I do, or to be expert in counseling? What should I do? You will tell them, go and learn. So that I tell you, go and learn Islamic uh, Sharia, Islamic, uh, all these uh, you need uh, to study. No. Yes, go ahead, Brother Zubair. Yes, we have a question from uh, Sister. Uh, Saima, she said, Dr. Abdullah beautifully highlighted the importance of protecting the Islamic image by not blending with them with Western psychology. A lot of Muslim psychologists relate the different types of nafs to Freudian stages. By doing so, are we corrupting the Sharia? Uh, can you repeat the question again, please? Uh, she said that a lot of uh, psychologists are blending uh, Islamic psycho Islamic image with Western psychology. She said that a lot of psychologists relate the different types of nafs to Freudian stages. By no, doing so, no, are we corrupting? Is, are we corrupting the Sharia? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Uh, you are presenting the Islamic concepts in wrong way. Now, uh, psychoanalytic, psychoanalysis, uh, and, and, and psychoanalysis, the, the scholars in psychoanalysis rejected some Freudian concepts. Are we going to reject some Islamic concepts that relate to uh, Freudian concepts? Of course not. But because some people connected between these these two concepts, uh, as soon as we have doubt, doubt either in some Sharia or in Islamic uh, or in, uh, in psychology, and um, I explain this uh, and this discussed it in my book Tamid uh, Tasir in a very lengthy way. Thank you, Dr. Sabah. Second question is uh, what would be what would be an example of Islamization of psychology and an example of Islamic Islamic psychology? Could you explain what example what uh, the voice uh, here is that uh... what, what, would, what would be uh, give us an example of Islamization of psychology? And an example of what is the difference be between Islamization of psychology and Islamic psychology? An example. An example. Uh, uh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, uh, some concept presented by Malik Badri, I consider it an Islamic psychology. He talked about uh, some applications and some concept and some theories. Uh, you can find it in uh, uh, the, uh, the literature of uh, Malik Badri, uh, uh, About Islamization, uh, I think uh, my book is an example of uh, uh, Islamization of psychology. Uh, the book of uh, Zamilna, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Salah Hassani, uh, Madhal, uh, introductory to Islamic uh, uh, psychology as an example of uh, Islamization. Uh, I think also Malik Badri wrote, uh, wrote a paper about, uh, uh, about Islamization in English. 
we can find uh, uh, and uh, here uh, I found in English uh, some papers about uh, the definition of self, uh, uh, about personality, about all this I consider it as an Islamic psychology. But whether it is right or wrong, this is something else, but it is in, in this area. Okay, no. thank you. The last question is, how do we, de how do we deal to psych, or how do we respond to psychology theories that contradict the Sharia? What should be our position? How we respond to psychology? To psychology th theory that contradict the Sharia. Uh, the theories contradict? Yes, contradicting the Sharia. Just, what should be our just, position? No. There are there are many things contradicting Sharia. Uh, it is um, just leave them and establish, establish your theory. This is don't say now I am going to correct this uh, uh, mass on theory or a party theory or what on theory. It, it is not responsibility to to try to correct uh, uh, these uh, theories. Just leave them I, I, as any th uh, any wrong theory or any shortage. Uh, or, or any theory has some uh, some some sort uh, shortage. Uh, just leave them and work on your uh, work on your theory. Of course, it is uh, appropriate to to tell you, your students uh, the uh, misconception and the theory or that uh, the contradiction between the theory and Sharia. It is good to, to tell your students, but your, your responsibility and your duty is not to say, I'm going to correct the theory. No, because you are not correcting the theory. No. Okay. Uh, there is a uh, question and a comment from a sister Sarah. She said, Islamic psychology is not to be limited to serving Muslims who have variability within group based on level of religiosity or desire to receive Islamic psychology informed treatment intervention. Please share what would you advise or highlight to resolve the dilemma of clinical practices based on Sharia. The treatment plan. This is, yes, your, this is the first this part is good of the question. question. This is this is good a question. And I, I, and, uh, I agree with the sister. Uh, Islamic psychology is not for Muslims only. Uh, Quran did not come for Muslims only. Uh, anyone can learn from Quran. Anyone can get hidayah from Quran. Uh, and Islamic psychology, uh, uh, for me, can work with Muslims and non-Muslims. But if we have mis misconception about uh, some psychology, then we will not work with uh, non-Muslim. If we say we have to make mawida, we have to uh, uh, tell people to uh, to repent, make toba, to uh, to perform salat, to, uh, then we are uh, abiding us by uh, Muslims only, and this is wrong. Uh, yes, if he's a Muslim, we'll tell you, we'll tell him. But uh, Islam uh, study the nafs and self uh, at is, as it is in it is natural way. And we have to know the fitrah and work on the fitrah. Uh, fitrah, uh, inshallah, I'll talk about fitrah and about uh, uh, nafs inshallah later. But without knowing this, uh, we cannot uh, get into uh, get into non-Muslims. I speak about this inshallah later. Yes, Jazakallah khair. Uh, Sister Sarah is continuing with interesting questions. She, she said, "We know that in Western psychology, no judgment, and we we need to meet the clients where they where they are is part no judgment and meet the clients where they are is part of professional ethics." Do we need an Islamic psychology code of ethics and treatment planning from Sharia perspective? Then both the practitioner and the client must already have this understood. Please share your insight to this aspect 
جزاك الله خير I did not get that, that question. Yes, she, she said that uh, do we need an Islamic psychology code of ethics and treatment planning from Sharia's perspective? Oh, okay. <clears throat> uh, suppose uh, uh, I'm not a psychologist. I am uh, uh, an imam in masjid. And one man came to me or one lady came to me and convinced to me that he did something wrong. I'm going to uh, turn my way and I saw uh, you are such and such and such. No, I have to work with him to get him out of this wrongdoing. And same thing a psychologist must do. Uh, you have to uh, help people uh, it, it, it is it is wrong to think that a psychologist or a counselor must agree or uh, uh, with the behavior with the behavior done by uh, by his client no but you do not blame him you do not uh, uh, criticize him for what he is doing just you discuss with it you try to help him to get it out from the uh, wrongdoing. I hope uh, I explain it uh, clearly. Uh, thank you. Mariam is asking, Salamu alaikum, just, just following on the question of Hannah, is there a specific content with, within the Islamic sciences that pertains specifically to psychology, or do we have to have broad knowledge on Sharia? Is I repeat the question. Oh, oh, uh, uh, repeat again, please. Is is there specific content within the Islamic sciences that pertain specifically to psychology, or do we have to have broad knowledge on Sharia? You have to have broad knowledge of Sharia, of course. Uh, mm, until now, I don't, I don't know if there is uh, uh, enough or uh, uh, you have, uh, you have to study Sharia, you, you have to, you have to. Okay, yes. Thank you. Yes, uh, Zainab from USA is uh, asking, how can students of knowledge learn more in depth of Islamic psychology? What could be the, start, the starting point and how can one learn in a structured method? Dr. Zubair, I think we did that one. We did that one, okay. There's a question, um, there's a question by Brother Ahmed. He, um, uh, Uh, the translation of the word psychology to Edmund Nafs, i.e. the knowledge of the soul. Is that a correct translation? And if that is correct, then are we to say that Islamic psychology or Islamic psychologists seek to treat the soul? And would we, would we not say that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can treat the soul? So... Shall I repeat that, Dr. Abdullah? Uh, he's asking about uh, the soul and uh, uh, psychology. Uh, and, uh, as I understood uh, the question, uh, is it appropriate because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, uh, uh, I'm not sure in psychology, Either in Islamic psychology and Western psychology, we are we we do not uh, study or investigate the reality of soul, haqiqat mm. ruh. We no. study the behavior. Okay. We study the uh, uh, the apparent uh, behavior or the apparent. Uh, characters or attributes. We are not uh, going deep about the reality of uh, things. The, uh, 
studying or to talk about the, uh, the essence or the reality or haqiqat uh, is uh, a philosophical concept, uh, but the scholars uh, lift it away and uh, direct their research about the behavior and about something we can, we can uh, see it, not something we can uh, conceptualize about it. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Sabeh. There's a question. How would no Islamic clients, no Islamic clients, no Muslim, understand the interventions if it is not relative to them? Mm. Uh, would you please repeat the question? I, I did not. Uh... How would no Muslim clients understand the interventions if it is not relative to them? Interventions, uh, I assume here, meaning using Islamic psychology with yes, non-Muslims. Yes, it's that. Uh, it is a responsibility of uh, uh, the counselor or uh, the psychologist to uh, to come down and explain uh, this meaning to the client. This is one thing. Second thing, it is not uh, there is, uh, uh, the client uh, it, uh, is not required to practice Islamic uh, uh, ibadah or because, uh, because he's, he's not Muslim. And it is the responsibility for the psychologist to uh, transfer the meaning or or to do some uh, uh, some methodology uh, for the client and to correct his behavior without need uh, uh, to practice uh, uh, an Islamic uh, ibadah or aqidah or uh, like medicine, uh, you are uh, you can treat uh, the person without uh, change, uh, changing his uh, aqida. Uh, also, you can, uh, you can treat the self or the change the behavior without changing the, uh, the aqida. Uh, uh, you have to know the fitrah. Fitrah, uh, uh, and some concept if you study it very well, you can you, you can uh, move the client uh, from many things, from many bad things uh, he's doing, because uh, anything uh, is not good is against uh, is against his uh, his fitrah. Uh, okay, thank you, Doctor Sabi. Omar is asking. My question is how do you relate Islamic psychology to the purific purification of the heart? To the purification of the heart? Of the heart yes, the relation between Islamic psychology and the purification of the heart. Mm. You are speaking about uh, purification of the heart. Uh, uh, is required by Muslim, and uh, uh, I I don't know if uh, if the psychologist will go and uh, go deep in the heart and the niya and uh, uh, seems he he will go beyond his ability and. Uh, uh, I would advise to go uh, beyond uh, uh, to go deep in, uh, in this area. Yes, go ahead, Sister Fatima. Another question. 
from Sakina. Yes, Assalamu alaikum. Do we, do we presently have diagnostic or assessments for foundational Islamic framework such as wala wal bara and its distinct features, love, nearness, aiding, and assisting, or disease of the heart, assessing for the presence of hasad, anger, lust, etc. Is there an existing database or theories? Mm, would you please repeat that uh, question? She asked about diagnosis or assessment from Islamic perspective and integrating uh, things like why, Malak, why, Mara and, uh, why, why he's asking about agnostic? He is asking, she's asking about agnostic, right? Yes, uh, or assessments. Agnostic. Uh, diagnosis, diagnosis, diagnosis. 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 These, uh, to get rid of hazard and to get uh, rid of uh, uh, envy or uh, something like that, is something uh, common between Muslims and, and non-Muslims. Uh, even if, uh, uh, if you go to non-Muslim, uh, to uh, non-Muslim psychologist, uh, and he found that you, ha you had uh, hazard or envy or uh, <coughs> anger or uh, he will try to treat you to get rid of this. Uh, it is not uh, uh, only uh, abide by Islam. No, it is uh, uh, anyone can, uh, and anyone uh, who understands his uh, work uh, can do that. Is Islam, uh, being a Muslim uh, or not Muslim, uh, did not uh, stop you from helping uh, this person or the client uh, to get out of these, uh, they call it uh, the sickness uh, of heart. No. Sister Fatima, you can ask. Uh... Yes, I, I, Zainab is asking, Zainab from USA, is asking, do you think that the no opening and no spread of psychology at the Muslim society at the time of Muhammad Qutb is due to how the West used it and what it caused them of disbelief? So they treated it the same way they treated philosophy <coughs> And in Mikela. The voice, I, I, really, I cannot hear it. Mr. Fatima, can you? Can you read that? Yes. Can you read the question, Sister Fatima? Yes, I will read it again, inshallah. Uh, this is the one from uh, Sister Zaina. USA, yes. USA. Do you think that the non-opening and non-spread of psychology in the Muslim society at the time of Muhammad Qutb is due to how the West used it and what it caused them of disbelief? So they treated it the same way that they treated philosophy and mul karam. Like that that Islamic psychology, uh, Sister Zainab, if you're here, please, uh, please, you can correct me. Um, but basically, that at the time of Muhammad uh, Qutb, that it, it, the psychology didn't spread as well, because of the way that um, the West used it, and the, the way that the West treated it the same way that they treated philosophy. Yeah, during uh, during uh, seventy years ago, uh, the the Muslim scholars uh, uh, were almost uh, Westerners in their mind. Uh, 
uh, as, they, as they were students of, of Freud and Watson and or Suluki or uh, psychoanalysis or, uh, and Muslim world uh, suffer of, of uh, uh, Hazima of uh, defeat at that time and still but now we are facing uh, or we are witnessing uh, a mature growth a mature uh, uh, return to Islam and uh, uh, it is different from our situation 70 years ago uh, we hope inshallah uh, now we are witnessing a return uh, and we are witnessing uh, a development of uh, uh, some Islamization movement and social sciences. We hope, inshallah, our situation will be much better than it was uh, 70 years ago. Yeah, yeah, there is a question from, uh, do you hear me, uh, Dr. Sabih? Yeah, yes, yes. Sometimes yes. Uh, uh, I, I do, there is a, uh, there is a problem, but uh, now I hear you. Yes, uh, Sister Sumia is asking, there are hundreds of theories in psychology. We are free to choose theories that resonate closely with our Islamic values and establish our own theory from which we we'll arise our clinical tools to accomplish our goals also defined uh, by our Islamic theory. She said that uh, we, we can choose from, uh, West, from Western theories that resonate or that, clo that are close to our Islamic values. Mm, I said in, in the lecture, <laughs> yes, some, uh, some lectures, uh, 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 some, some theories uh, totally against our uh, religion and uh, invite people to, to be away from religion. Um, and some other theories try to be neutral. Uh, uh, but still, uh, all the theories are not in, in, in harmony with, uh, with the Islamic values and with the Islamic uh, aqidah and with the Islamic, you have to be aware of that. And uh, you have to be aware, and we have, and we have to work on our uh, on our theory, uh, our framework, our paradigm. Uh, we should not give up. We should not give up. <coughs> now, Barakallahu uh, fikum, Dr. Abdullah. Uh, we do have a few more questions, uh, but I'm okay. just uh, mindful of the time. And so I want to let our dear participants know that we have collected your questions and we will save them. And Alhamdulillah, we have the opportunity again in two weeks. So that will be August 17th that uh, Dr. Abdullah Sabih will join us again. And hopefully you all will join us again for session two. And any of the questions, um, we will try our uh, absolute best that any of the questions that were unable to be answered here today, that we can collect them and uh, we can start off next session, perhaps with a few of these questions with your permission, if that is okay, inshallah. So, um, uh, Barakallahu Fikum, uh, Dr. Zubair and Sister Saima and uh, the team at ICIP that has made this possible. Um, it's been shared in the, uh, the chat, the feedback form. We would really, really appreciate it if you can just take a few minutes and fill out that form. We will be sharing this form at, uh, at each session. Um, I, I think somebody had asked, can I wait for the, for the whole, um, for, the, for the, all of the five? But we know that some people are sometimes joining some of the sessions and maybe unable. So we'll be providing this feedback form uh, each time. So um, regarding the WhatsApp groups, um, Brother Zubair has, um, has, has put that into the chat. And those WhatsApp groups, again, are an opportunity for people to join the Islamic psychology um, WhatsApp resource sharing. That's where a lot of our articles, links to videos, 
We also do have a digital library um, that for the last eight months, we've had volunteers at ICIP working on organizing all of those resources. And we're very, very excited to be able to share that with the entire Ummah. That is coming up soon. As soon as our website is available, you will be able to become a member at ICIP and you will have access to over 800 um, resources that we have as a team sorted, organized, tagged, uh, relevant to Islamic psychology. So I wanted to just put that out there that um, ICIP does have a digital library dedicated to resources in Islamic psychology, and that will be available to the public, inshallah, as soon as you become a member uh, of ICIP, which will be through our website. In the meanwhile, um, uh, Brother uh, Dr. Zubair has shared in the chat um, WhatsApp groups uh, links so that if you are already not uh, a part of the um, Islamic psychology um, WhatsApp groups, then you may do so. We know that some people may have joined through other mediums or through um, a friend or something like that. So thank you so much to Dr. Zubair for providing those links. Um, so Jazakallah Khairan, Barakallah Fikum. We really, really appreciate um, everybody's time here. We apologize and we ask for your forgiveness. We know that you know this was the first time in a very large gathering. Um, so we apologize that we started a little bit late and inshallah next time we'll have that all smoothed out. And um, if you encountered any difficulties, please forgive us. We're, we're, we're trying our best and we ask for your du'as and we ask for your forgiveness inshallah. Um, so uh, at this time, I'm just gonna take a very quick look at the chat. Um, so Jazakallah Khairan. Um, I hope, inshallah, I hope, inshallah, that you found some benefit. And I do want to remind people that we will have this recording up, inshallah, uh, within a week. So before the, our next session, we will have this available for, um, for you to review it, or if other people weren't able to join. And um, we had, like I said, we had over uh, 600 people register. So um, this will be available. Uh, we know that there's a strong interest. At this time, I would uh, kindly ask uh, Dr. Abdullah Sabih to end with us with Surat Al-Asr and um, with, uh, uh, with a dua. Thank you for you all. Jazakallah khair, barakallah fiqo. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you Jannah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our little effort and to give us our shortening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.